All right, this is my new video, my bowl baking video for this week. Uh, moving into the next section of the book where she's doing thinner material bowls. Uh, I've got some material coming. I've got two more multi-angle cut bowls I'm going to do. I've got to get the material in for those, and it should be on the way. But I'm going to go into this now. I've got uh, two different kinds of wood. This a fairly complex blank and I, they have a one of them I'm going to do this multi-angle makes a blank the same way so it's the first time I've tried it so I haven't done that one yet but I've got two pieces of this mahogany and two pieces of this ash and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut these in a circular pie shaped pattern and glue them back together alternating and so we're going to have to glue we have to cut these stacked so they'll match back up when you put them back together and you're going to glue a half a circle at a time so the pattern looks like that I'm going to cut that pattern in half and I'm going to glue two of them together with this pattern on it and the other two together with the other side on it cut those lines and then re-alternate them Oh, and, and alternate them and re-glue them. And to do that, I've also made a couple of jigs that she has. One is this little little jig. And what this is for is to give you a straight edge when you glue those pie shapes back together in that double stack with alternating colors in there. You can keep that edge straight because you've got to glue the two halves back together. And then for that, there's a clamp to glue the big circle together, a little that's, that's a piece of uh, Baltic birch. I have a picture of it. I'll throw up there how I had it laid out before I cut it. She had instructions in the book on how to do that. Uh, that's not absolutely necessary, but I think it'll really help. And uh, this is also, that's two quarter inch Baltic birch glued together to make a half inch. And then I got a qu three quarter inch piece of Baltic birch and I got that cut straight so we can get a good clean edge. So first, the thing is, I got to, she says to put these together with uh, double-sided tape. I don't have any, so I'm going to use another technique or trick or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put some blue tape on it and use some super glue to glue the tape together. I've done that before. I've done stacked cuts. It works pretty well. The thing is, you want this, want them stuck together so that the individual pieces will stay together when you cut it apart because you've got to number them and keep everything straight. So let me start work to work gluing these together or taping these together and uh, then we'll alternate those and glue them and we'll get to work on it. So that's the next step. I'll get my blue tape and my super glue and we'll glue them together. I've got to make sure I get it right. I'll have to consider it a little bit before I do it. And then we'll cut them. We'll put the patterns on them and cut them. Okay, I got the uh, two pieces stuck together with blue tape and super glue. Uh, mounted the pattern, cut the pattern in half and mounted one on each piece. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut the outline on both of them. And then I'll come back and cut these, make these three cuts. And uh, then we'll do some numbering and getting things arranged uh, the way we want them to keep track of them. Okay, so I got the uh, patterns off. They're all cut, got the little segments cut. What I've done is I've taken each one and I've numbered the matching set. There's six and six, there's, there's eight of them. So what I'm gonna do is alternate these. Just gotta make sure that the alternation is common throughout. So what I'm gonna do is 
flip the other, every other one there. Just like that. Now let's say that's not right. We have to do this one. There we go. So we'll have four semicircles to glue together. And then glue those these two of those together, make two halves, and then glue the whole thing as a circle. If you understand what I'm saying. I'm not sure I understand what I'm saying, but right now this is what we're going to do. I'm all, I got this little jig to make me a, glue, a straight, make those edges straight, and I'm going to glue those four together on that jig. And just make, I'm not worried about the outside, I want to make sure I got the center correct because we're going to glue those together there. I can touch them up a little bit, probably to even them up with a sander, maybe even mill them slightly on the table saw or something. But uh, they're almost set up to glue that now. I've got the first one on. It's one, two, seven, and eight. And then we'll have another one with the same numbers with alternating colors. And we'll glue these one at a time. I put a little tape on here so I don't glue it to my little jig. I got a piece of tape right down through there too. And uh, she said just put it on there. Put some glue on there and press it with your finger against there until it's set. And not really a good way to clamp it. But I'm going to try to make it all fit right. So we're going to we get a little glue out and I'll work on that. Okay, so I got those all glued together. Now I'm going to arrange them with corresponding colors. The numbers are going to be the same. The eight, that's the number eight, that's the number, or that's the number eight, that's the number eight, and that's the seven, and that's the seven. So they're all lined up the way they were originally cut. I'm going to mark it that way, and I'm going to sand everything smooth, top and bottom on these, so they'll match up real nice. And then I'm going to glue them together. I'm going to use my... Uh, bowl pressed to do that and I'm supposed to let it set overnight that's what she said but anyway I got to do a little work I'm going to do a little sanding get everything smooth and uh, then I'll see about gluing it
All right, she said to leave that in the press overnight. I put it in about 10 o'clock in the morning and took it out about 5. And I think it's uh, it did real well. It's uh, laminated together pretty nicely. I don't think there's any gaps. We'll see as we'll cut into it. Uh, now what I've got to do is I've got to draw two circles, which we'll get, i got to get, figure out where I want to center it. Draw two circles that will uh, mark the first ring to cut. Uh, so let me get my compass and get the numbers off my little list over here, and I'll draw those circles. Okay, according to her directions, I need a six and a half inch circle for the outer circle. And then I'm going to come in three eighths and draw the inner circle so I'll have the first ring a pattern drawn. So what I do, I've set my compass. I do, I set it on my little on my little ruler here. And then just to make sure I got it right, I will draw at least two sides of the circle and measure in between to make sure I set it correctly. So this is measured at it's tested out at six and a half diameter circle. So now I'm going to draw the first one and I'll use this. It has eighths and sixteenths. I'll use this to come in three eighths and draw the second one. So there's the pattern for the first ring. I got to cut this this outer one first, of course, and that's the reason I didn't worry about smoothing the outside. You're not going to use the very outside of that. Uh, so I'm going to get, put a number five blade in the saw. I'm going to set the table on it at 38 degrees. I'm going to cut that outer one. Then I'll come back and set my uh, use this to set my uh, drill press table, drill an entry hole, and do the same thing there, come around and cut it at 38 degrees. Okay, I got the table at 38 degrees. I've got a number five blade, and I'm just gonna cut this outside cut right here. Okay, so we did this like several of the bowls. I used that first ring to sit on here, line it up, <clears throat> excuse me, line it up, and I marked the inner, inner circle of it to get the next cut. <clears throat> I used a ballpoint pen this time because that pencil was really hard to see in some areas. Uh, if you can see that or not, I also, of course, I got the entry hole drilled. I marked this and I marked the other one the same, so I make sure I get them lined up the same sections that go went with each other originally. I uh, also usually use the drill marks to line it up. As you can see, they're visible, and that, that uh, helps to get everything lined up the way it came apart. But I like to double, uh, give myself some backup on that and double up on uh, procedures so that I make sure I can, it may not matter, but it might, because you don't cut everything perfectly. And you can try to put everything back together the way you cut it apart. So I always try to mark everything and find some procedure to keep them lined up best I can. So I'm going to cut this one and we're going to do the same thing again. Use this one to mark the next one. And uh, I believe three rings is it on this one. There's an alternative bow with five rings and a, 
uh, thinner thinner rings. I may do that one later because I kind of like the way that bowl looks, but we're going with the original for right now. Here we go with the same procedure. I used that ring to lay on there and mark uh, the inner cut for this ring. So I'm going to cut this. It's all at the same angle, 38 degrees. And I'll double check, but I think that's it, three rings. And I will start seeing about mashing them up here in a minute when I get this cut off. Well, there's the uh, mock-up of the bowl, the rough mock-up. Got a lot of sanding to do on this. My cutting wasn't very good. I wavered a lot on this one. Uh, and I think part of that problem is that combination of woods. This uh, aspen's fairly dense and the uh, mahogany is much less dense. And I, uh, it was you're cutting both at the same time, but something about switching between them like that, it, uh, I would have trouble staying on track, but I can sand that out. Yeah. Plus, I'm using an older brand of blade. I've switched brands about a year ago, and I use Pegas. Now, that's the subject of another video and why I did that, and I just never have made that video. Uh, Pegas is my go-to blade now, but I had some older, the older blades that I quit using, and I'm trying to use them up, and they don't cut as well as the Pegas, uh, as I have learned. Anyway, I didn't want, I ran the reason I had made a video, I didn't want to badmouth the brand of, of blades because I used them for years, uh, but I got a batch that was really bad, so I switched. Anyway, that's another story. So I'm going to do now, I'm going to match these rings up, sand them and get everything uh, lined up where there's no gaps in them, and I'm going to glue them together.
Okay, I've got the rings glued together. It matches up real nice on the outside, not so much on the inside. And I'm just going to use my little straight sanded, sanded uh, sander. I'm not going to use the inflatable one, I don't think. This is a straight sided bowl. Uh, mainly what i got to do is match these up and then get out the, the inconsistencies I have in the circular part of it. Um, get that rounded out, especially on the bottom where it would be visible against the base, but I want to get it all rounded out best I can. And you know, you got a fairly hard wood in there and a fairly soft wood, so I'm not sure how it's going to sand. It may actually transfer some color between them. I don't think it will, but we'll see. So I'll get my sander set up on my drill press and I'll get started on this internal part. Hopefully it won't take real long. Okay, so we have a big jump in the video here. I went from beginning to sand the bowls to having practically a finished bowl. Uh, I've been running this YouTube channel on my phone for, well, since I started it, and the phone is like eight or nine years old, and so it's time to replace it. So I've upgraded phones, new process in moving files from phone to my computer to edit, and all the stuff that I do. So somewhere in the process, I lost some of those files, and, or I'm not sure exactly what happened, but you know, you get used to something and you change processes and there you are. Anyway, what we have here is the bowl. I finished sanding it. I've tapered out these edges and I glued the base on. Now she had an option on the base where you could cut that out a half inch hole in the center and replace it because it's not, doesn't perfectly match normally. Mine matched fairly well, so I just left it as is. And the bowl's not perfect anyway. There's a few sections that didn't line up properly somewhere in making the blank. I'm not seeing it right now, but uh, right there is one. It's not exactly lined up. Not sure what happened somewhere in making the blank. I made some sort of an error. But I'm going to revisit this again. That's got one coat of polyurethane on it. And I usually put seven or eight very, very thin coats. So it'll be several days before I get the final, final coats on it. Uh, she has an alternative to this bowl. I may have mentioned that before. I'm not sure which videos I've lost and where I said that. But it's uh, thinner rings, a different angle, and five rings. So you have a taller, narrower bowl. And I really like the looks of that bowl. I'm going to try it. Not necessarily the next video. I've got a couple of I've got some material coming. I've got a couple of bowls lined out uh, that I needed some material for I didn't have. And that should be here this week, so I can have enough for two weeks worth of videos, hopefully, when I get that stuff in. But anyway, and as I put this first coat on, I found places I need to sand, and that's normal. Uh, I've sand between coats anyway. But anyway, that is more or less the finished bowl for this uh, video, this project this week. Hope you liked that. If you did, hit the like button. Uh, hit the subscribe. If you're not subscribed and you like seeing bowl making, of course, that's not all I do, but I'm kind of in that. For the first half of this year, that's what I'm going to do, probably, until I kind of get caught up with the, in the book what she has and then maybe do some of my own designs. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.